there, this is Danny Mo for jamplay.com. I want to talk to you about warming up and also tie in with that your timbre, your sound. Okay? You have a lot of personality in your sound. So, first, let's talk about warming up. I, uh, before I play pretty much every day, and I, I end up playing every day, fortunately. Um, I like starting out with chromatic runs up and down the neck. It's really just to wake up the, the tendons and muscles in, in my fingers and in my hand. Uh, and after decades of playing, I have to say, I've been injury free. So I, I like maintaining a healthy diet of, of uh, just some chromatic runs up and down the neck. I do like playing with a, with a drum track. Um, so I'll set it at various tempos and, uh, and warm up that way. Uh, one thing I could recommend to you is that you learn to keep your fingers close to the fretboard. There's no point in really taking them too far off. Just think of economy of motion and how that's going to work for you when you start playing songs and whatnot. So um, for those of you who are gigging a lot or jamming with friends, I think you'll start feeling better if you warm up a little bit. It's just like stretching before you're going to work out or play a sport or something like that. On the descending end, your, f your fingers will want to fly off the neck more. So just tell, talk to your finger. There's got to be some connection between your brain and, and your hand, your fingers. Try to get them to stay close to the neck. <laughs> And so on. You know, then I'll take two strings, do three strings, and that's about it. You know, I, I like to get playing uh, music and songs, but but make make these chromatic exercises musical by keeping your time together. And um, then let's talk about timbre. Timbre is your sound. Um, you could pull the same bass uh, off the wall at a music store and hand it to to five different people and, and you'll get five different timbres because your sound is really contained in your, in your hands. First it might start with a sound image in your head and somehow you figure out with your hands how to, how to reproduce that sound. Um, which is why I, I favor personally a muted timbre. So I, I mute with my left hand. I'll mute, mute with these fingers and finger the note with the index finger. So instead of this sound, I'll get this sound. Okay, it leaves for a, a rather shorter note duration, um, but that, that's my preference. And um, everybody has their own preferences and tastes, and uh, you just want to unfold yours and unleash it and get it on as many tracks as possible. So you could, you could also warm up with that, and I kind of have some fun with with rhythm too. What that's going to do is warm up your, your picking hand, my right hand. So I'm thinking 16th notes against that big fat, you know, rock beat number one. Boom, jack. Boom, jet, decka, 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 decka. So I'm centering myself on that snare drum. And trying to put 16th notes in between them. Again, that's warming up this hand, as well as getting that muted technique. Here's what it sounds like, just traditional fingering. So to me, it adds a little bit more bottom. And a, and a more defined note, okay? Um, up and down the fretboard, some people have these, have these patterns that they work on. W whatever you choose to do, I think it's healthy to get into a routine with it so that every day when you pick up your bass, uh, you could just start out with a little bit of that. Or I enjoy doing that before a gig. Um, it's, it's kind of become a, a, a routine of mine 
and um, I'm a little bit superstitious about it so that if I don't warm up and do these few chromatic runs, um, I feel a little bit guilty. So I force myself to do that and, uh, and I'm ready to play some music. Once you're warmed up, you could take really any exercise that we've done in the series or, or a bass line, a favorite bass line of yours, and, and practice this muting technique. Uh, that's what I do and I, it ended up being my, uh, my go-to left hand technique. So I'm going to mess around with that for you. That's kind of a, a one four progression. You could also take a lot of these triads that we've been working on and mess around with those. And again, you're bringing in now thinking polyphonically, you're thinking chords, you're working on your sound, and you're working on your groove because you're, you're really keeping that snare drum centered for you. Okay, happy, happy playing and warming up to you. 